What's up guys, welcome to General Hospital Envy, my GH after show. Before I get started, I wanted to say thank you very much for your patience. I was incredibly sick last week, I had no voice to give you, but I still wanted to give you a video and that was the result. As you can tell, my voice is a lot better. I still have a bit of a bad cough, but the good news about video editing is that I can edit it out. I just coughed. Did you notice? Nope. So let's get into it. Jasper Jax has returned to the show temporarily, and he's acting a bit strange. For whatever reason, he is very adamant on dropping the search for Jocelyn's donor. He is seriously ready to take Carly back to family court over this. It's very extra, don't you think? He went over to Alexis to ask for a legal representation, but obviously she can't given her current situation. But he did hint to the fact that he may be in some legal trouble on his own. Listen, I'm glad that Ingo is back on the show. I love Jax, but I don't know about what's going on. I... There is something shady there. I want to know what it is. Let's get it out in the open. Does it have something to do with Jerry Jacks? I feel like it usually does. I would be so down for Jerry to be returning right now. But let's see what happens. Speaking of Alexa, so her daughter Sam is back in town. They got out of the Cassadine Island mess. By miracle, they made it back to Port Charles. So we finally get to see Sam comfort her mother in her horrible situation. And then we got to see what I have been waiting for for weeks. That is Sam confronting Julian's ass in jail. She gives him that good old I am done with you goodbye speech. And you know what he does? He uses the whole daddy needs a donor thing to try and keep Sam in his life. Cue off screen GH. Apparently Jason got tested to see if he was a donor match for his son and he was. At least I think that was off screen. I don't I think that happened on screen. I can't remember. So Julian can really no longer hold that over Sam's head, which just made me ever so happy. Julian has got no one left in his corner, not even Ava Jerome. She did visit him, found out his situation, and while she sympathizes and loves her brother, given the situation that she just got out of, she cannot in her good conscience help him escape prison. In the words of Meatloaf, I will do anything for you, but I won't do that. And she pieces out. Back to Sam for a second, because I didn't really talk about this last week, even though it happened. Sam, for the past couple of weeks, has just been fainting everywhere. The first time I saw it, I was like, okay, maybe she's pregnant. The second time I saw it, I was like, I don't know. The third time, I'm like, what's going on? There, she's not pregnant. There's something else wrong. There's something really wrong. I would like to get to the bottom of it. I've actually got no guesses for this one. I like. Maybe it's some weird disease, maybe that'll put her into uh, Dr. Finn's graces. But I guess they haven't met yet, so maybe she'll be freaking out over his appearance? I don't know, we'll see. If that is the case anyway. Let's talk about the hospital for a second. The hospital killer storyline is still going on. Another patient died, Franco again was the suspect, but Elizabeth actually exonerated him, saying that he couldn't possibly have turned the monitor off because he went straight from the patient's room to their date, after Amy already checked it. I'm really ready for the storyline to move along. I, you know, I'm stumped as to who the killer is. A lot of people seem to think that it's either Amy or Valerie. Ugh, I don't want it to be either of them, so maybe I'm biased, but I know a lot of people don't really like Amy, and I can certainly see why, but I feel like she's too new to just kind of make her a killer, and I like the premise of why they brought her on in the first place to kind of be like Amy Vining back in the day, the hospital gossip. I just think that there's a lot more potential for her to grow as a character. I'd like to see it happen. I don't want her to be made a killer. As for Valerie, she... Look, I love Valerie. I know a lot of people don't like her either. I'm actually scared that she will turn out to be the killer or at least be killed by the killer. And it's like... Oh, it's annoying, it's frustrating because the character didn't really get much of a chance either. There's no spoiler saying that she's going to die or that she's going to be the killer, but personally I'd love it to be Dr. Obrecht, but I don't see them doing that just yet. It seems too obvious that it would be her. And then every other doctor and nurse that's there, it wouldn't make sense, so uh, I don't know. Let's bring this story to the climax so that we can get this party started. We're going back to Valentin Cassidyne because he ended up in Port Charles and he slept with Nina. He left his phone with Nina, which she brought to the PCPD because she saw that Spencer left a voicemail on there. Spencer is at some camp doing a show and Valentin shows up to pick him up and claims that Nicholas sent him. Before he's able to take off with Spencer, Sonny stops him. While Spencer finishes his show, Sonny and Valentin have a bit of a showdown. Valentin gets one up on Sonny, but not for very long because Jason comes to the rescue. The Sonny-Jason bromance is still very much alive and they'd make quite a good team. The PCPD do show up and arrest Valentin 
Valentine. Sonny is left alone with Spencer, and Spencer realizes that Valentine may have not actually been there to take him to Nicholas. Spencer has yet to see his father again, but he doesn't know that Nicholas may actually be dead this time. Obviously, Tyler Christopher is coming back at some point, so we know that he's not dead, but Sonny does have to break the news to Spencer that Nicholas might actually be dead, and I truly believe that Spencer Cassidyne, or rather the actor that plays him, Nicholas, may totally rock these scenes. We, I don't think we've ever seen Spencer in like an emotional, sad scene. I am ready to see those acting chops. I know he's capable of it. Let's see it. It's going to happen next week. The last storyline I want to talk about is a very awkward one. Apparently Darby has an STI. She may have given it to Dylan, which means she may have also given it to Morgan, which means Morgan may have also given it to Kiki, which makes for a really awkward storyline. I do commend GH for telling these kind of stories because this is not something I've seen on a soap before, and it's something especially younger crowds should deal with. These days, especially for the younger generation, it is kind of easy to just hook up with anyone. There's apps all over the place where you can just kind of see who's like 20 feet away from you and then go to their house and hook up with them. Which means that it's a lot easier these days to catch STIs. Not that GH really has much of a younger audience, but it could make some people think at least, right? I truly enjoyed GH this week. It was a really good week for General Hospital. Before I end this video though, I do have to say that next Friday, I am taking off to Montreal for a couple weeks. Obviously this week I will be able to watch General Hospital at least until Thursday, and I can probably find the Friday episode online. I will be bringing my camera with me to Montreal, so I can definitely give you some vlogs. I just can't guarantee that they will be on Sunday. I'm gonna try my best to make it on Sunday. It really just depends on Wi-Fi, and I don't know what that situation is yet with our hotel. I will catch you guys next time.